7. Now, loads of you getting in touch this morning about whether you still use your local pub because of the story this morning that British pubs are now declining at a rate of 26 a week. Uh, the government promised, you may remember, to introduce a watchdog to protect uh, what's being called valued public houses from closure, but they are yet to act. And our business correspondent, Cordelia Kretschmeier, is at a pub in London for us. And Cordelia, you're there because where the government doesn't act, it seems local people sometimes can. Exactly, Ranveer. Ivy House used to be owned by one of the pub company giants till it was sold to developers and closed for a year. Because it's listed, that gave uh, local residents the breathing space, the opportunity to get together and buy it back for themselves, effectively putting themselves behind the bar. One way to keep your local open. Today the Labour Party is trying another. They want new legislation, new rules governing big pub companies to stop them, they say, exploiting pub landlords. So they want a new code of practice outlawing tie-ins. Those are the deals under which landlords are forced to buy uh, beer, let's say, from the breweries at slightly inflated prices. They want new rules on uh, rent review, open market rent review, and a new pub watchdog. Extraordinary uh, to hear that more than half of landlords, publicans, are earning less than £10,000 a year. No wonder so many of them are going bust. Back in the day, some British cities could boast a pub for every day of the year, not just drinking holes, but often centres of the community. But over the past four decades, the number of pubs has been in decline down from 69,000 in 1980 to fewer than 49,000 today and the amount of beer being sold in pubs has fallen by a third in the last six years. In tough economic times, supermarkets have seduced drinkers with cheaper alcohol and a rise in beer duties hit struggling pubs hard too. 270 MPs have signed up to measures supporting the cultural importance of well-run pubs, which they say contribute to the nation's happiness but for how much longer? We're joined now by Mike uh, Benner from Camera, the Campaign for Real Ale, and Bridget Simmons uh, from the British Beer and Pub Association. Good morning to both of you. Um, so, I mean, there are some startling facts, actually, apart from the fact that 26 are closing every week. The fact that, um, Bridget, to you, really, that these pubs that often are tied into the big breweries and have to buy supplies from them at, a, at what they call an inflated price make hardly any money at all, really, for running all the hours that they put. £10,000, £15,000. Something's got to change, hasn't it? We are a great supporter of the Tide system. The Tide system allows you to run your own business by the age of 25 for £30,000. If you had to buy a pub, it would cost you half a million. And what I can't understand, looking at Mike here, is why Camera as a consumer organisation is supporting this campaign, because there are two things you would want to look at. One, is the price of beer more expensive in tenanted lease pubs? For the last year, and every year of the last four years, Beer has been cheaper in tenanted and leased pubs, so that defies the statistics that you've just given me. And the second one is, are you getting access for more craft ales? There is much greater access in tenanted and leased pubs but, but, for craft ales. But let's actually look at the bigger picture here, Mike. Is, is why is that number of pubs closing? Is it because we're working longer hours, we're keeping an eye on our health, and the fact that wine is now pop more popular than beer in this country to drink? Well, well, first of all, it is a consumer issue, despite what Bridget says, because it's consumers who use pubs, and, it, and it's a brave person who tries to shut down a pub without consulting people who use it. And we are, the problem that we're seeing is when licensees tied to these big pub companies are earning such a small amount of money, they can't possibly invest in their businesses. And so the amenity of the pub mm. suffers, it becomes run down, and then, of course, people stop using it. And so to make the market work fairly and for it to be balanced, there needs to be regulation so that that relationship between the big pub companies and, and the publican works so that the market is freed up and works to the benefit of consumers. But we have a self-regulatory system which works. You can have more support in tendered and leased pub than in any other business. If you had a shop on the high street, you would not get the support that pub companies are offering and they're investing 200 million in capital a year. Are the banks going to step in if they're not there? I think we well, close listen, more pubs. Well, loads of people have been contacting us, right? And they're saying, many are saying, it's too expensive. You can't smoking them anymore. I'd rather stay in the comfort and freedom of my own home. Um, the only pubs that seem to stay open, says Lily, are those that do food. I mean, our expectations have changed and our budgets have changed. Yeah, I mean, that, that pub called Healy's in, they do yoga classes, for heaven's sake. I, I think Correct. things have moved on and people do, you know, people's leisure activities have moved on.
on to a completely different level. So it's and easy really to blame the big chains who, as Bridget says, is probably keeping pubs on, on the street more than the independents. It's actually our attitudes that have changed. I, I think we have to recognise, and the government understands this, and this has said that they, why they would take action on the, on the issue, is that pubs are absolutely central to our way of life. They're an important community amenity that brings people together in a very unique and sociable environment, which I think is a great thing for everyone. Just briefly, Bridget, it's not the big chains that may be keeping them in our communities. They're now putting them on, on motorways. Weatherspoons is opening a pub on the M40 today. Let's the good have a look. news about it is we... Here it is. What do you we, think? The good news about it is that we have got pubs opening as well as pubs that are closing. And, you know, the Weatherspoons, not only the, on, the only access is not from the motorway. There are many pubs that you have to drive to. We would be absolutely united in saying you don't drink and drive. We support designated uh, driver campaigns. At the end of the day, where we would both agree is one of the reasons that pubs are closing is because they put beer tax up so high. 42% in four years. Last year was the first year that we saw mm. a reduction. We need another reduction this year too. Thank you very much indeed.